In the previous episode, we cleared the remnants of the Empire Kingdoms and Batania from the map. We sued for peace with Sturgia and turned our sights to the west, the next largest power on the continent, Vlandia. We defeated them in the previous war, but suffered significant casualties going up against the sharpshooters. Sothris is currently sieging down Thraktory Castle for us, so hopefully he finishes the job. Oh, that's right, one of the Empire Kingdoms took Epinosa from us, and are sieging Seratos Castle now. We don't have time to defend our eastern borders, so we will rectify that later. Wow, Sothris just barely crossing the finishing line with less than 100 troops left. We proceed further south to Yusank and siege it down. After quick auto-resolve, the castle's ours. Here we go again, they want Sargo. We dispatch the army without much issue and ready our army for the journey north. They're starting to siege down some Batania lands which we cannot permit. Most of these were recent conquests and may not have enough garrison to hold them off, so we rush to aid Dunglanis. They're sieging with close to 800 troops and already have siege engines beating the walls down. The assault begins before we get there, but fortunately the town holds out. Time to flex our numbers advantage. We push our archers to the front and exchange volleys of arrows. Our archer line outnumbers the enemy 3 to 1 and they quickly rout, sending their infantry line forward in an ill-advised charge. Our archers trade places with the shield wall and the cavalry are pushing in from the left flank. Since the infantry are already committed to the center, we switch our cavalry to attack their right flank cavalry instead. Their line quickly disintegrates, turning the battle into a full-scale retreat. We pulled off a 20 to 1 victory against a significantly large army, although they will no doubt field another one shortly after. Looks like Marinoth is next on their hit list with a similarly sized army. We lose a few more troops this time, but mostly because I was busy bonking cavalry with a mighty hammer instead of directing the army. Once again, Monchuk comes for tribute. This seems to be historically accurate as that's the best way to keep the Mongols out of your lands. Back to Sargo again. The AI just loves to siege this town down every campaign I've been in. Our boys are struggling to finish them off so we step in to help out. It's an easy battle and we take two nobles captive. They won't see freedom for quite some time now. Time to head west and begin the cleanse. Now that we have the prisoner escape perks, looking for easy battles to capture nobles is a priority. This group of 300 ain't going nowhere. Seven deaths later and we continue onward to Jacqueline. They have just under 600 defenders with the majority being untrained militia. We jump the defenders on the wall and quickly make our way to the murder hole. Time to cause some havoc in their back lines. When outnumbered by this much, don't hesitate to retreat constantly to avoid being overran. Better to live with dishonor than die like a noob. These billmen make me nervous, but they seem less skilled than the Menavlians. We try to help break up the defenders at the wall to help our infantry out, but with several shields turning our way, we have no choice but to retreat once more.
We put up 82 kills personally, most of them being with Satan's Tooth. Since we will be taking everything from Vlandia, it makes sense to hire a few more companions to promote. Brungalther the Loud will do for now. Don't feel proud of yourself, my dude. We literally just need someone with Vlandian culture and a pulse. After a few days rest, we head west to Gelland, but have to immediately turn back as Jacqueline is under siege. Never mind, Sothris has it under control. With siege engines ready, we begin the conquest of Galand. The town falls and we take a couple days to rest and recover again. Finally, we get the vote for ownership and pass it off to Brungalther. Well, well, well. Looks like our boys took back Epinosa in the northeast. That will save us some time later. Hongard Castle is just north of Galand, which is our next target. It's lightly defended at 400 troops and should fall easily. We do some parkour several stories up but live to tell the tale this time. 50 losses and the castle is ours. Vlandia took a few fiefs from Batania and they seem to enjoy sieging our Batanian fiefs, so we head that way next. Talaville Castle is very lightly defended, not even 400 troops. They hardly resist and we take the castle. Ab Khmer Castle is only a few hours ride to the north, so we make our way there next. With less than 100 defenders, we opt to auto-resolve. On our way to Penkanuk, we cross paths with two allied armies. Vlandia isn't taking anything back around here anytime soon. They must have recently taken this town because it has barely 200 troops to defend. Another stuck defender, another war vote against Kazate to avoid, and another town falls to Prussia. A couple hours ride east and we come to Lanukhen Castle. Another recent conquest as they have only 59 defenders. As expected, it falls almost immediately. What's not expected is Durthurt groveling at our feet, begging for peace, and offering 6,500 dinars per day for it. We will stop at nothing less than unconditional surrender. One thing I love about Batania is that everything is so close together. Aster Castle is just north of Lanakan and also has a tiny garrison. It falls instantly. In the span of a few days, we've taken four fiefs from Vlandia. Time for the last Batanian town, Karbanseth. Again, it's slightly defended and falls without much resistance. To the west is Druimor Castle, with 250 defenders. Vlandia sends 700 troops our way, but there's little they can do beyond being a nuisance. We lose 17 troops and win the siege. We still have the 700 troops tailing us, and if we don't handle them now, they will siege back some of their lost fiefs. We run them down as soon as they hit the woods and give them a whooping. Ideally, we would conquer the last three castles to the east and north, but I think taking Ormanfard first would help more. By taking this and putting some troops in the garrison, it forces Vlandia to attack this first before moving into Batanian lands, making our life much easier for defense. Don't underestimate the power of having a buffer fief to distract the enemies. They have just under 300 troops and quickly fall. Someone is sieging down Amprella and Epinosa Castle. I'm really hoping our allies can handle that as backtracking that far would really slow us down right now. We spot 600 troops heading into the Batanian Hills, so we move in to stop them. They're a little too fast for us, but it looks like our diversion castle will do its job. Oh boy, the Empire is still kicking. Where are you getting the money for all these troops? On the bright side, we can hang onto these nobles for a while. Our plan is working perfectly. The Vlandians can't escape because they're disorganized from the siege. We win the battle easily and take several more nobles hostage. Batania thinks they can sneak a castle back, but they are sadly misguided and now will spend eternity in our prison. Now back to taking castle to the east. Pendrick is next on the list and again we see less than 300 defenders. At least they're getting better than 10 to 1 odds against us, I can respect that. Nevyansk is just north and has a little over 200 defenders, so we will try our luck with an auto resolve. We can absorb the losses, not a problem. Amprella is under siege and Penton is trying to take Makeb. Good luck Penton, I have faith in you. We could take the last castle, Callias. But we aren't too far from the siege at Ormanfard, so we head there to collect a few more nobles. It seems they are scraping the bottom of the barrel now, barely able to muster 300 low-tier troops. Back to Callias for an auto-resolve siege. Man, these sieges are brutal when you don't fight them in person. On the way back to Vlandian mainland, we come across these poor souls on the bridge. 14 deaths. I don't even want to do the math here, but it's not looking good for Valandia right now. It will be much easier containing the enemy for the final battles in the north, where there's a single choke point, so we opt to take the south first. We will start with Ox Hall and swing around in a circle until all are captured. This is proper Vlandian clay and is much better defended with 760 troops. However, it's still not enough and the town falls. We will head for Veriksand Castle to the south next. 
but must prepare to return to Oxhall to defend if they contest it. And wouldn't you know, 500 Valandias show up just in time, but they can't outrun us. Nor can they resist, and we lose only 13 troops. The push south continues. With only 290 defenders, it's another slaughter. To the west, we see Prevand and Drapen Castle left. Since we are deep in enemy territory, we shall attack the castle first, which will help to preserve troops in case we need to fight a field battle after. As expected, we lose only 32 troops and our main army remains intact. On the way to Prevand, our nobles ask for peace with Vlandia, which clearly isn't happening. Time to spend the last bit of influence we have and finish them off quicker. As their kingdom contracts, their defenses condense, making it harder to win sieges. They have about 850 troops and ballista, so we opt for Onager to help clear the enemy siege engines and help during the actual siege. All four of our Onager are close to breaking and they have only one ballista left, so we begin the siege. Some fief layouts are better than others for Onager as we see here. All volleys crash harmlessly into a tower and do zero damage. We went down earlier in the fight, but our troops managed to stop them, losing only 110 in the process. With each siege win, we take more nobles hostage and limit their ability to defend. With the first phase of the war over, we release all of the army and call fresh troops to our banner. To the north, we march. Revolt is next to fall, and with only 500 troops to defend, it doesn't take much. More stuck troops, an odd resolve, and an enemy lord in prison. All in a day's work. Turby Castle falls a day later and Vlandia has one last hope to remain a kingdom. Ostakin is swarming with small parties and a couple armies, so we proceed with caution. Time to defeat them in detail. We catch these 350 against the cliffs and demolish them. Five losses, yikes. Another army appears and we corral them into the mountains and proceed to smash. With 800 troops removed in the last two battles, we should be good to siege down Ostakin now. The defenders nearly match our numbers and have Ballista deployed, so we slow things down a little and prepare for a proper siege this time. We build four trebuchet and a full complement of siege engines in the back row. Regea has finally had enough and wants peace. These scumbags raided our villages 37 times. Ouch. Back in Ostakin, we continue the siege duel. They're replacing their losses as fast as we can take them out though. It won't get much better than this, it seems. So let's do it. Ostakin looms ominously through the fog. This won't be an easy battle, but our troops are ready to lay their lives down for the kingdom. The defenders can't compete with our archers and continue streaming soldiers into their meat grinder. The gates are breached and it's only a matter of time. They stubbornly resist and the gate entrance holds firmly in their possession. We must not give an inch. We will fight to the last man. Get out of here, man. And just like that, Vlandia slips into the annals of history as the kingdom that once was, but is no more. Durthurt sues for peace, opting to live his days in a local village, feasting on butter.